I got beans, green potatoes, tomatoes, ram, ram, hog, dogs, cut chitlins. You know if you are a black person from the South, you have had an encounter with chitlins. Depending on who you ask, this is either the make or break dish for Thanksgiving or the make you break for the door dish. Highly controversial, no question can wreck Thanksgiving dinner like the simple question of who cleaned these chitlins? I was listening to Art New Style TV's panel and surely enough, a conversation on chitlins popped up. Which is why I can't eat chitlins today. My mother was, you know, Ooh. and I was in the, the room next to the kitchen and uh, <laughs> And uh, she was uh, she was making chitlins, she boiling them overnight. Yeah, you got to clean them and boil it. Man, I was in the bunk bed at the top. Man, the whole yeah. house. Yeah, the whole, it's in the whole house, but you know, it really got me. So I couldn't. I, I've never been able to eat them. You know, I was like seven when she did that. I could never eat them. All of us have had a story about chitlins that's either that story or very similar to it. <laughs> And if you've ever been in a house where chitlins were cooking and you didn't like the smell, you remember that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you are blessed. <laughs> we rebuke the spirit of the devil. Yeah. You are prayed over. We guarantee you that you are not about to succumb to those chitlins. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? You're going to save me on this one. Oh, my God. <laughs> it smells foul. Girl, just don't worry about the smell. I told you I opened mine. Uh, come on. 1099. 1099 online. 1099. Just do it. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, and you spit it in my freaking bowl! In order to corroborate the story, I want to make sure that you hear another example of what cooking chitlins in a house does to it. My aunt out there in San Bernardino. And I was, I was supposed to stay there overnight. I almost stay in a hotel because she, uh. she said because i'm thinking okay because she's preparing for thanksgiving you know so she's making she's making stuff and she said i'm gonna go ahead and make the chili and i'll be done <laughs> i went in that house it felt like somebody said, <laughs> Shit. I, said Sh <clears throat> I said i'll be back go if you can find it go go find some hard get cheese and and that's take a whiff. Stuff on the yeah, it is, and that's it, it. It smells like that. That's what it reminds me of. And they sold that's, like hotcakes. Oh my god! It's a delicacy, man, in the south. <sighs> yes, sir. That's I the smelled, reason I, why I smelled it once. <clears throat> can't do no slave food. Chitlins are more than an expression of our historical past as formerly enslaved black people in America, but it's a symbol of our ingenuity in being able to make something out of nothing. The Bay State Banner: Chitlins from slave food to delicacy. What are chitlins? Chitlins are a dish typically found in the American South, but they are prepared all over North America. They take a long time to clean and cook and are so labor intensive that the presence of chitlins are typically reserved for special occasions and the holiday season. Chitlins are cooked either stewed, broiled, or fried. The history of chitlins. Most people of color believe that chitlins were invented by slaves who received the last of the unwanted meat from the annual hog killings of the slave masters. We did the best with what we had, and chitlins were one of the dishes that we made with the extras. And this is partially true. Chitlins, as well as bacon and other pig meat, were given to slaves as leftovers. The ingenuity that created chitlins from our slave ancestors remains present even today. The creativity concerning chitlins has found its way into sliders. Or how about some chitlin nachos? Depending on who you ask, chitlin nachos slap. Or even this. This is why y'all don't eat at other people's house. I came to my auntie's house and she let somebody else make her macaroni. And it's chitlins in her macaroni. This is why you don't eat at other people's house. Let them know. <laughs> oh my God. That's how the f your children supposed to look. In no way, shape or form am I making fun of people who continue to eat and enjoy chitlins because I have them in my family. It's an acquired taste, much like many other foods from overseas. It's just a taste that I haven't had the ability to acquire myself. That said, it is a representation of parts of our cultures that we can carry forward if we like, but is it a necessity to carry forward the culture of eating pig intestines? That is a question that many people question as we grow into a new younger era and we look at some of our practices and question the need to continue them. But there's another practice that we continue that also needs questioning. I don't want to 
to be in these gates. I want to be outside in the neighborhood. That's why I want to be over there. No, yeah. They don't understand that. Yo, I'm going to tell you the reason why you want to be over there. Y'all ready? Because... We have another tradition in the black community and recently it's an unfortunate one where we establish a man's masculinity, manhood, based on how close he is to the street. And you can hear in this exchange between T.I. and Tiny, who grew up much less privileged than their son got to, basically saying, you didn't grow up as tough as we did, so you should be happy being in the suite and, you know, enjoying our money to a certain degree. And the young son, the young man saying, I can be a man my own self. I'm my own man. And I can prove it to you by not going to college and becoming a doctor or starting a business, but by proving how I could live on the street and I could function just as well as you or anyone else is doing it in the black community. And you get this unfortunate exchange that is an unfortunate representation of our community and how we value masculinity. Yeah. 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 They try to say I was over there trying to suck a passage, but they ain't gonna tell you everything like that. They're trying to hide it. He capping. He capping. He know I stand on business. He know that. Hey, ever pull my car ever in life? I stand on business. You, you drop me somewhere, I stand on business. I've been standing on business. You want to hide it for the world, I'm going to put it out there for them to see. I, I, I want to put up nowhere. You ain't had me put up nowhere. Like, I ain't, you ain't had me behind a mansion. I was outside doing what I wanted to do. What's really unfortunate about this situation is that this young man had the opportunity to live in some of the nicest neighborhoods. He had a chance to go to some of the finest schools in metropolitan Atlanta. And at the end of all of it, he wants to be a thug to prove his masculinity to not just his mother and father, but to people on Instagram. And this speaks to the fact that if we as Passport Bros want to create a new legacy for our families, we are going to have to acquire some new tastes. I'm from Ohio. I'm from Daejeon, Korea. How old are you? I'm 31 years old. What's your name? Isaiah. What's your name? Hey, but people call me Haley. I'm 32 years old. How long you guys been married? About six years. How did you guys meet? So I was stationed here in the army. It was my first duty station. I didn't know much when I really experienced Korea. At first, I was being a typical soldier, standing outside in the ville, outside the base, uh, not really expanding my horizon here. I think one of the biggest challenges, if not the biggest challenge for Passport bros, black male expats, or even black men who travel is learning how to choose a mate based on not what we've been told as they make me feel a certain way or they have a certain shape that arouses me, but choosing that person based on their qualities because those are the qualities that are going to make the relationship work, make the family work, and extend your legacy. I was at a, a bar in Itaewon about uh, six years ago. She was sitting there at the table behind me. I, I spotted her out and I was like, what's the way I can uh, talk to her, get her attention without the usual annoying way? So I just made up something and I was just like, hey, uh, I'm trying to take the train back to Pyeongchang, back to base. Uh, is this the right train I should take? And she was a little bit uh, nervous about her English maybe, but she, she spoke it and then she helped me out. And then I just, you know, beat around the bush a little bit and then I eventually asked for her cacao talk. And then that's how I started. Now listen to what she did for him while he was in the middle. Military. And this is really key. Distance for a little bit because I got reassigned to upstate New York. So we had like a little small break and then she came to New York and then we follow each other ever since New York, Colorado, Hawaii for a brief time and Colorado. And after I met her, I started doing like local things. In my opinion, the biggest obstacle awaiting many passport bros is the traditional ways that we have been taught to choose a mate. We have been taught to find someone that's physically appealing, very beautiful, big thighs, sexy first instead of choosing someone that speaks life into us, someone that adds light into our lives, someone that calms our lives, someone that complements our lives. I truly believe that we're going to have to acquire new taste. Maybe she doesn't have the biggest butt. Maybe she doesn't twerk as well, but those are things that you can purchase. But what you can't purchase is a woman that's going to bring peace into your life and a woman that is going to essentially complement your life and make it better. This is the lesson I think many passport bros are going to have to learn to acquire a new taste for a woman. She might be skinnier than you used to. She might not have the kind of hair that you like usually. But if she's the type of woman that speaks life into you, 
that has far more value than a big butt and some sexy legs. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, guys.